Welcome to the Laredo Winner. On tonight's show, we'll get a chance to meet Elena Lerma Weatherhold. She's devoted 30 years of her life at the Ruth B. Cow Rehabilitation Center. We'll also meet Faustino Reyes as he recollects the day he saw Pancho Villa. From the grill, Ed Herbs will prepare oysters on the half shell. Stick around. We'll be back with more of the Laredo Winner. The Laredo Inn is brought to you by the Quick Bite Family Restaurant at 3401 San Bernardo and by the Laredo Chamber of Commerce Cola Blanca Big Buck Contest. My Uncle Danny and I are here to talk to you about a great restaurant called the Quick Bite Family Restaurant at 341 San Bernardo. That's right, Jason. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant offers delicious seafood, mouth-watering steaks. Your favorite Mexican dish and live entertainment every weekend. Enjoy a romantic evening with dinner and drinks or perhaps a family gathering and try one of our delicious entrees. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant is where you ought to be right now. I'm hungry. How about a shark steak? I'll have a lobster. The regular whitetail hunting season is just around the corner. Maybe your dad, granddad, or great-granddad some years back shot a great whitetail and put it in the attic or in the basement. Well, now's your chance to get it scored. The Laredo Chamber of Commerce Cola Blanca Committee is having their first annual Great South Texas Search. Remember the date, Saturday, November 6th, Center Court, Mall del Norte, between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. Who knows? You just might have a Boone and Crockett record that no one even knows about. Turn to the Laredo Inn. Elena Lerma Weatherhold has devoted much of her life helping others at the Ruth B. Cal Rehabilitation Center. I started working at the Ruth B. Cal Rehabilitation Center, Center back in 1960, October the 1st. I started out as a physical therapy aide, mostly, uh, and um, when there was just a tiny little place, the rehabilitation center consisted of two little rooms, and I was the assistant to the therapist. I'm a nurse by profession, and um, I became um, supervisor for the nursing staff. Then uh, Mrs. Cowell gave me a chance to be uh, an administrator, and then I went on to become a program coordinator. Well, it was a new field in Laredo. When I started back in 1960, 1957, 58, 59, uh, this was a very, very new field in Laredo. Nobody really knew anything about rehabilitation, including myself. So I decided to uh, look into the possibilities of a new thing for um, uh, nurses. Uh, Mrs. Cowell had come up with the idea of having a nurse rather than just a an, an aide in the physical therapy department, and she chose to have uh, somebody that was certified and licensed. And I was, I happened to be her second nurse for that time. So um, that's how the, the program developed, having an, a nurse rather than just an aide in the department, the physical therapy department. We were assistants to the physical, to, to the licensed physical therapist in the, um, in the center. When you have to have a clinic and the, the doctor turns around to somebody that, and you have to explain to a parent that it's, that their, no, their child is not going to be as normal as everybody else, it's very difficult, very difficult, because the parents do not understand that that child um, is going to be limited. They, they only see the words. They think that he's going to be crippled forever. Instead of looking at the positive side and thinking, well, what can I do to help my child become better, they think, oh, he's going to be a cripple for life. And some of the parents do give up in life. They do fairly give up, and they, they stop coming to therapy. They stop. Um, uh, all help when they uh, retreat from life instead of trying to help the child. And uh, we have several cases like that in which the parents then give up totally. And yet on the other side, we have the other parents that have kept on um, helping the children and some of these children have become very successful uh, business persons, teachers, lawyers. We have some in the community. 
and um, so it, it's, it works two ways and this is a very rewarding experience here in the center. Um, while the progress is very slow, uh, it's very worthwhile to see a, a child start to walk, start to uh, crawl, to creep, because you see that that's, uh, it's a very big effort on their part. So it's uh, very rewarding. It's not really the monetary reward, certainly, but I think it's the joy, the, the pride of having to do something in the community that's not available anyplace else in the, um, in the, within the radius of 150 miles. When I started here, there was absolutely nobody no giving physical therapy, nobody giving occupational therapy, nobody giving speech therapy. And our services have uh, been added to the community. It has been my joy to see that they've been implemented here at the center. Uh, we didn't have special ed. We did not have, um, we had the first classroom of special ed children here in the, in, in the, in the center with 12 special children that we used to keep and um, take to the bathroom, take to physical therapy. So I'm very proud to say that we have been um, innovators in a lot of areas that Laredo was really not uh, ready for. We've had a lot of uh, young men. I, I can mention Gustavo Claudio. He's a composer and a singer. He used to be a, my patient many years ago. And I'm sure a lot of people still remember him and I'm sure they're watching or they're still hearing his songs. Um, I'm sh there's been many, many people that have come through the center that have become a success here in the community. And I think some of them have become rehabilitated and habilitated because of the services here at the center. Elena Lerma Weatherholt, a caring Laredo one. We're unmasking the best offer in town on this 1993 special edition Mustang convertible from Sames Motor Company. Just imagine, no money down and only one $20 payment and this can be yours. And you'll also be eligible for a chance to win a gold coin necklace donated by Marty and a 30 inch ranch meat stroller donated by Richter's. The drawing will be held at the Mardi Gras Charity Ball on Saturday, November 6th. Just see any Women's City Club member now and purchase your Charity Ball drawing ticket. If you belong to a nonprofit organization and would like to air your message on the Laredoan, write to us in care of the Laredoan, P.O. Box 2039, Laredo, Texas 78044. Por tener la suerte de haber nacido, desde luego, con una familia, mis abuelos mexicanos, mi madre más mexicana que americana aún, habiendo, aún así, habiendo nacido en Laredo, Texas, pues. Eh, Eh, me crié en un ambiente de creencias, de supersticiones, de, uh, ¿qué dijera yo?, de, de creencias que la gente creía y que al, al fin, a través de los años, resultaron mentiras. En mi casa no se comía plátano de noche porque hacía mal. No se comía aguacate con leche porque era peligroso. Cosas, cosas que nos que nos inculcaron nuestros padres que ellos creían que eran ciertas y el cual con el tiempo resultó que eran solamente creencias de la gente. En todas las casas se habló, se ha hablado de fantasmas, de casas uh, espantadas, de apariciones. O sea, en todas las casas se habló de curanderos de remedios caseros. Uh, el Halloween que está por venir ahorita ya para fin de este mes es, es una creencia uh, pagada desde luego, pero muy importante. Muy importante porque uno hace, uno se disfraza en Halloween sin saber por qué. El por qué del disfraz en Halloween proviene de una generación que hubo hace muchos años, eh, era una raza al, al norte de Inglaterra, se llamaban druids. Los druids creían que la noche del 31 de octubre, las mujeres que se dedicaban a la brujería se convertían en lechuzas y podían volar de aquí a otro pueblo de este barrio a otro barrio 
haciendo un mal encomendar. Sea que un muchacho quería hacerle un mal a una muchacha porque no lo quiso, sea que un hombre o, un, eh, o una mujer quería hacerle un mal a un hombre porque la despreció. Entonces, según la tradición, se valían de unas brujas para que fueran la noche del 31 de octubre a dejar pelón al señor, a hacerla más fea a la mujer, hacerla más narigona, la nariz más grande, hacerla visca, cualquier, cualquier, cualquier más que lleva. Hello, I'm Pablo Rendon with radio station KBDR, Border Oldies B100, your newest radio station in this community. I have a 10-year-old son. His name is Pablo Borrendon III. I also enjoy jogging and I love this community. We'll return with more of the Laredo Inn after a word from our sponsors. That's right, Jason. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant offers delicious seafood, mouth-watering steaks. Your favorite Mexican dish and live entertainment every weekend. Enjoy a romantic evening with dinner and drinks, or perhaps a family gathering and try one of our delicious entrees. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant is where you ought to be right now. I'm hungry. How about a shark steak? I'll have a lobster. The regular whitetail hunting season is just around the corner. Maybe your dad, granddad, or great-granddad some years back shot a great whitetail and put it in the attic or in the basement. Well, now's your chance to get it scored. The Laredo Chamber of Commerce Cola Blanca Committee is having their first annual Great South Texas Search. Remember the date, Saturday, November 6th, Center Court, Mall del Norte, between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. Who knows? You just might have a Boone and Crockett record that no one even knows about. We now return to the Laredo Inn. Born in Candela, Mexico on March 14, 1907, Faustino Reyes immigrated to the United States at a young age and provided for his family by doing what most people did back then, work the fields. One of the highlights of his early childhood in Mexico was catching a glimpse of the famous Pancho Villa. Bueno, la experiencia que tuve ahí que como cuando yo tenía más o menos como unos siete años, este, hubo una revolución ahí en mi pueblo, en Candela, y pues toda la gente tuvo que salirse porque iban a pelear ahí. Y entonces nosotros nos fuimos con rumbo a, a, este, a un pueblo que se llama El Progreso. Cuando ya limpiaron el pueblo, que ya todos los muertos, el, el gobierno tuvo que mandar soldados para limpiar el pueblo. Y entonces ya cuando ya volvimos, pues no, ya estábamos perdidos, ya no teníamos cabras, no teníamos, pues, lo malo que llevábamos puesto. Entonces mi papá le dio por, por irse a un ranchito, este, que se llama, se llama El Saucillo. Es, es un rancho de vino donde hacen el mezcal ahí. Y ahí estuvo mi papá trabajando, pero no era muy poquito lo que pagaban. En, en esos años pagaban 50 centavos. El día, fíjate. Y, y a los chamacos, por arriar burros y todo eso, 25 centavos. Y yo me acuerdo haber arriado burros, arriaba como 5 o 10, según los que me daban. Y cargados de, de, de piñas de, de mezcal. Así es que ahí trabajaba, trabajó papá, más bien, yo digo que trabajé, pero pues no más andaba ahí en, a, arriba de un burro. No, pues no, no pudimos estar ahí porque este, pues no había comida, era muy, muy duro. Entonces mi papá este, tenía un coche de sitio y nos fuimos a Sabinos, Coahuila. Gastamos como tres días de camino. Entonces yo estuve en la escuela y, y yo no me acuerdo exactamente, pero cuando yo estaba ahí en la escuela, este, tocó que vino Francisco Villa, amaneció una, una mañana ahí, eh, hubo un combate ahí, mataron unos cuantos y no, en la mañana amaneció. Entonces, y la gente luego lo empezó a por, oh, que está Pancho Villa. 
Y pues yo, pues, como estaba chamaco, a, no, a, la, a la gente no le hacía nada, ¿eh? porque el, el, lo que andaba peleando él era otra cosa. Así es que me tocó la suerte de conocerlo, porque este, como andaba dando shine, boleando, este, lo veíamos desde lejos. ¿eh? Y, y de esa manera le digo yo a mis hijos que, que yo lo alcancé a, a ver, ¿eh? no a conocerlo exactamente, pero a verlo desde lejos. Y, y este, estuvo unos cuantos días, tanto que ahí, en ese pueblo, este, mandó a los, a los tendajos más grandes, así como la, las novedades y todo eso, con una lista este, para vestir a, la, a toda la gente. Ahí la vistió. Eh, ¿Cómo iré? Llevaron una lista de tantos pantalones de tal medida, tantos zapatos y así. Ahí vistió su gente y, y toda la caballada ahí la, la, la soltó y, y agarró caballos nuevos. Entonces, como... No quiero mentir, pero este, porque yo estaba chico, como quiera me, me acuerdo de cómo pasó eso. Por ahí, por la casa de nosotros, pasó una comisión que venía de México. Este, vino un tren especial y de ahí había casa redonda, de ahí, ahí voltearon la máquina para venir a ofrecerle a Francisco Villa llevárselo para pa México. Pero él no admitió porque era un hombre muy este, desconfiado ¿eh? y pues, no sabía qué, era, qué le iría a pasar. Y entonces no, no admitió, este, nomás firmó ahí, quién sabe, ¿cómo iré? No, no, no sé exactamente la fecha cuando, cuando, cuando él firmó el armisticio para irse con la condición de que le dieran este, la 100 de canotío y que le dieran 100 soldados y que no le quitaran el rango de general, porque él era rango, él tenía, eh, era general de toda la división del norte. Bueno, es que, era, era un hombre que, que, que valía, ¿eh? y más de cuatro le tenían bastante miedo. Faustino Reyes, a truly remarkable Loredoan. Today's minion from the grill is fresh grilled oysters on the half shell. Don't go away, we'll be right back. From the Grill is brought to you by Ruiz Custom Meats at 2119 East Lion for all your deer processing and storage needs. We start off first with some freshly charred oysters. And we're going to put a topping on these oysters and then we're going to grill them. Today's topping consists of six crackers ground up, one tablespoon of cilantro, one tablespoon of celery, one tablespoon of onion, two tablespoons of bacon, one teaspoon of jalapeno pepper, one teaspoon of garlic, one tablespoon of spinach, one tablespoon of mushroom, four tablespoons of butter, and the juice of half a lime. We're going to mix all of these together. I'm going to put a top in, then we're going to put some Parmesan cheese on top of it.
Looks like our calls are ready now. Let's throw the oysters on the grill. Let's add a little salt and pepper before we put them on the grill. And by the way, don't forget to visit Polo and Robert Reese over at Reese Custom Meats for all your outdoor cooking needs. These oysters will take about 15, 20 minutes right here on the grill. Or, un or until the, 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 the cheese is a little golden brown. Let's close the lid and smoke them for about 15, 20 minutes. Let's check our oysters to see if they're done. You can see how they're bubbling, so they're, they're done. Well, there you have it. Fresh grilled oysters on the half shell. Until next time, this is Ed Herbs from The Grill. From The Grill was brought to you by At Reese Custom Meats at 2119 East Lyon. Visit Polo or Robert Reese for all your custom needs. Also, remember during deer season, visit them for deer processing and storage. Reese Custom Meats, 2119 East Lyon. The Laredo and Outdoors is brought to you by Border Sporting Goods, now at their new location, 5219 Mare Avenue. Well, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. We're out here doing a little scouting for the upcoming deer season. We've thrown corn on the sendero that you're looking at now, and also we've thrown some corn down that end that one we're hoping to see if we can spot some bucks with me today is my buddy Sal Narvaez good morning Sal good morning. how you doing pretty good hopefully we'll just be able to get a glimpse of some nice animals I want to remind everybody to to uh, register for the Cola Blanca contest Sponsored by the Laredo Chamber of Commerce. Well, so far this morning, the only action we've really seen are a couple of bucks that are way out there. You can barely see them here, way out of camera range. One's a small young buck. The other one's young, but he's got a nice little spread on him. And we have a whole herd of does coming out. They really smell that corn, don't they? Yeah, they got a spike there, too. And there's a spike. At this time, the Laredo and Outdoors would like to congratulate two bow hunters. One is my cousin Frank Ramirez for shooting a real nice 10 pointer, and also Mr. Mike Link. He also shot a real nice 10 pointer. Congratulations. And we'll return again next week with the Laredo and Outdoors with Sal as we continue scouting for bucks. The regular whitetail hunting season is just around the corner. Maybe your dad, granddad, or great granddad some years back shot a great whitetail and put it in the attic or in the basement. Well, now's your chance to get it scored. The Laredo Chamber of Commerce Cola Blanca Committee is having their first annual Great South Texas Search. Remember the date, Saturday, November 6th, Center Court, Mall Del Norte, between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. Who knows? You just might have a Boone and Crockett record that no one even knows about. My Uncle Danny and I are here to talk to you about a great restaurant called the Quick Bite Family Restaurant at 3417 Monadamo. That's right, Jason. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant offers delicious seafood, mouth-watering steaks. Your favorite Mexican dish and live entertainment every weekend. Enjoy a romantic evening with dinner and drinks or perhaps a family gathering and try one of our delicious entrees. The Quick Bite Family Restaurant is where you ought to be right now. I'm hungry. How about a shark steak? I'll have a lobster.
We now return to the Laredo Inn. That's it for this week's show. Join us again next Saturday at 6.30 right here on KVTV. For the Laredo Inn, I'm Danny Alcocer. Hairstyles for the Laredo Inn are provided by Heavenly Hair. Call them today at 727-8478 for your appointment.